Hi everyone, my name is Teria and I work uh, for Swan ELT and I'd like to start by thanking Peter here for introducing me to ELT Island. Um, he's a good friend and colleague, so thank you. Uh, so today I'd like to talk about uh, informal assessment because it's a subject of particular interest um, to me. Um, so when I started um, teaching about nine years ago, I found that informal assessment was something that um, occurred naturally. Um, and it was uh, something that kept coming, coming up in every lesson, every day. Um, my understanding of it at the time was quite hazy because I didn't know how to integrate it into the teaching and learning process. Um, and I found myself assessing students when I didn't know I was doing it. Um, and I also found myself, and I'm sure a lot of you would agree, that I was doing it even when I wasn't teaching. So um, um, I would go home and think, why is my husband using, um, or my boyfriend using a different register today? Or <laughs> why did he put a determiner in that place and not at the end of the sentence or in the middle? Which is a bit sad, but, um, <laughs> uh, but it just means you have a love for language uh, in general. So um, what is um, informal assessment? Um, it can be formative in the, in the sense that it allows us to check um, students' uh, progress. And you have your immediate aims. So um, your lesson plan for that day is, um, is ready. But um, what you ultimately want to achieve is your learning aims for that day. And if you follow um, a weekly topic, um, our topic at the school, for example, um, sorry, our syllabus is topic-based. So um, whether it's topic-based or grammar-based or function-based, you have your immediate aims and you have your weekly targets. By Friday, what do you want your students to achieve? And sometimes um, worksheets and classroom tasks do not give us the full picture. Um, and also it determines how far students have progressed in terms of um, language acquisition. So there is a focus um, on not so much on language accuracy, but uh, linguistic competence as well. And I think a lot of that comes through when um, we look at informal assessment from a different angle. Um, and also, um, as I said before, you can measure the progress you are making and students are making in line with the syllabus or the curriculum you're following. Um, and most importantly, sometimes you find out what students have at their disposal. Um, if they did a placement test, you might know that, you might find out that their writing is very good, but they need help with grammar. But there are surprises that come up um, and sometimes, um, you didn't know about them. And it helps, it helps you know your students better. So what did they already know that we didn't pick up on at the beginning? Um, so um, I'm no expert on how to assess, um, informally assess students in every possible way. But um, these are ways um, I have used uh, in my classroom. So I teach um, first certificate students and A2 learners in my morning class, although that class is now mixed levels. Um, so that's a whole new adventure I'm looking forward to. Um, in terms of speaking and listening, um, you often assess students while they're speaking and you start to notice errors. Um, you start to notice that they're using different register or they're struggling with sentence structure, for example. Um, with first certificate students, they have, they're working towards an examination um, and they have their targets. So there is, there is a heavy focus on accuracy, but I think informal assessment lifts that burden of having to stick to deadlines and we need to learn the structure for writing an essay or writing, um, uh, presenting an argument. Um, when uh, I used to conduct speaking activities, um, it used to be a matter of 
getting the task done and getting through the language point of that day. Um, but I recently found out um, that if I let students speak freely and discuss a debate, um, or for instance, um, role play an interview, or simply question, questions and answers, and just take a back seat and observe, um, they didn't feel under pressure to perform in a particular way. They didn't feel that they had to use uh, the past perfect or uh, reported speech that day because we were teaching it uh, for the purpose of the exam. Um, which um, which breaks, brings me to my next point. Um, yes, you can assess the speaking and listening skills. You can assess how far they have come in terms of um, retention of vocabulary and form, but uh, writing is uh, equally as important. And um, written work and feedback uh, doesn't have to be formalized. Uh, it can be uh, your students writing about something they feel uh, passionate about. Um, and feedback is really crucial because they, when, when somebody writes something, they want you to acknowledge it and they want you to take the time and discuss it with them. And it's, it's at that particular time when you find out what you didn't know about the learner. Um, acting as um, an observer, sometimes you have to look at the students as an outsider. So for instance, if they're doing group work or pair work, what I try to do is just let them be and observe um, how they work in a group uh, how they prefer to learn. Are they leaders or do they, do they like to facilitate? Do they like to organize tasks? Do they prefer to write or do they, do they just want to speak? And um, the problem I found with being the observer of um, this process was that um, there was too much going on and I couldn't observe every single student or every single group. Um, so I, what I decided to do is um, keep a mini journal for myself and I use that as a tool for follow-up um, action points. For example, tutorials, um, individual learning plans, classroom learning plans uh, in, group t in a whole class tutor tutorial led by the teacher but whereby students are also able to participate. Um, and I found that by using the journal, it, was, um, it, made, it made it a lot easier for me to uh, follow what was going on um, in my students' minds. Um, the other thing I, I learned recently um, was that um, I had an A2 student who seemed to struggle with speaking and seemed to struggle with um, reading uh, long texts. So... With, by looking at his um, initial assessment or placement test, I couldn't find anything uh, to work from um, because it was a bit restricted. It had a set format and it was computerized. Um, and I didn't think that perhaps the student in question was under pressure to, to perform this test or uh, in order to be placed in the right level. And the student never spoke a word during class. So when he was prompted, he would smile and say, could you come back to me later? I'm not ready. Or he would simply say, I, I don't want to speak. Um, so I decided not to put pressure on this particular student. And this went on for three months, um, close to three months. So I would uh, sit with him and uh, work with him during group activities because I didn't want him to feel that he was less able than the rest of the class. But when um, I stopped interfering in his learning process and when I observed him in one of the activities, he was doing most of the talking and he'd never spoken more than one sentence in the past. So that's when I decided to have a tutorial and find out why he didn't want to speak. Perhaps there was a serious issue and I could address it. And the student just said, I just don't like speak, speaking when I'm prompted, when the teacher, well, he didn't say when I'm prompted, he was A2, but um, <laughs> when, I'm, uh, when the teacher wants me to speak, um, he liked, uh, and I found out later on, he liked to assimilate and take it all in. 
for weeks on end or perhaps months on end. And this language just emerges and it's beautiful and it makes sense. And uh, there, there's form uh, meets fluency and it was beautifully combined. And his ideas were so organized and he was talking to me with confidence. So it took um, a tiny observation and a tutorial to find this out. And I wouldn't have found out otherwise. So I thought that was um, a learning curve for me. I'm still trying to find out more about informal assessment. Um, so some of the observations were that students were, um, this is following the inf informal assessment, whether it was speaking uh, in written form, uh, group work, uh, or keeping journals. Um, students were able to reflect on their own progress. They, they would come up to you at the end of, of the session or on tutorial day and say, um, I think I'm making progress because I can use this now. Um, and there was a sense of collaboration and teamwork between student and teacher, um, which, which was quite a nice thing to see. And there were surprises. There, there, there were things that would crop up. I, I didn't know, for, for instance, that one of my students um, liked uh, to, to read and write poems because I, I hadn't used poems with them before. But when I took the time to listen to, to them in conversation, uh, I found that out um, because I didn't put any pressure on them to complete this task by this time within 10 minutes because the course book says so. Um, and it does break the backwash effect for, for classes such as the first certificate class. And if you want to read more about the backwash effect, whereby teacher and student are uh, bound by exam class deadlines and structures, um, it's in uh, Jeremy Harmer's, um, I think, does anyone know the name for uh, the Harmer's uh, book, 2010? Practice of, so thank you, the practice of English language teaching, and there's a whole chapter on it. And these are some of the statements students um, came up with. Okay, um, I know the answer, I just don't know how to put sentences together. And um, you, we may assume that, that that particular student just can't speak and you, you don't put pressure on them. Um, Teacher, please correct my mistakes when I speak. Sometimes you don't want to correct a student at every single second whenever they make um, a mistake, but some students actually prefer that, and you don't find this out unless you uh, take the time to assess them while they're speaking with no pressure whatsoever. Uh, I, feel, I feel more relaxed when I communicate naturally and listen to others. Um, this was a first certificate student um, she said this after we had done exam practice, exam speaking practice, and then we did an informal conversation where, whereby they could talk about a certain topic um, with no criteria as to you need to use this and this language point and this grammar structure, or you need to include this vocabulary. Um, and can we talk about my homework? This comes up all the time. It takes a while to get some students to do homework, but once they get into the habit, they will come up to you and say, can you give me more homework or can you check this or check that? Um, I think it, informal assessment takes a more humanistic approach um, and, it, and it makes you assess this, the learner as a person and uh, as an individual and it makes you look at learning preferences and see them in a different light. Um, I found that their interest in um, language increased um, and what I mean by that is their curiosity and their willingness to go and find things out for themselves. Um, and um, it helped me set learning goals. It was a bit like a contract between student and teacher. Um, so we're working towards um, fluency or achieving this aspect or that aspect of your learning. And of course, students' autonomy increased because they, they, then they would know what to go and search for in order to improve their um, language skills. Um, speaking tasks and activities, for instance, became very meaningful. So it wasn't about 
uh, we're doing this for the exam or we're doing this because we have to. It was more about um, there's, there's an ultimate purpose and that's to improve my, um, myself as a student. And finally, um, this, this brings in this idea for the student that my teacher evaluates my speaking skills. They need to know that you evaluate, you, you care about what they say and you are taking notes and you are evaluating it and giving them results and solutions. Uh, therefore, I can make progress. Um, thank you very much.